So now we've finished forecasting, but the problem we have is that our balance sheet doesn't balance. Now, the way that we solve this is that we use, we have to have some kind of plug or some kind of balancing item. And so we're going to use the overdrafts and short-term loans as our plug. In other words, if we don't have enough money to cover the amount of assets that we have, we're going to borrow more money. So how do we do this? Basically, the first thing that we do is we calculate the total assets. We take the total assets and subtract away all the different liability accounts. Now, as you notice, I'm skipping the sum accounts. Partially, that's partially because I don't want to end up with circular references causing a problem. Um, so I'm going to continue to subtract away each of the items until I've got every item on the equity side of the balance sheet uh, subtracted. And so what we're going to see is that the amount of asset growth that we had was not covered enough by the amount of borrowing, long-term borrowing that we forecasted or by the retained earnings that the company made. And so we had to borrow extra money. That balancing figure then allows us, if I go down and look at our balance, our balance is now zero. Now this is an important place where we can talk about circular references. Sometimes you'll get a message that says circular references cannot be resolved. And basically when you get that, what you want to do is go to uh, Tools, Options, Calculation, Automatic, and you want to select Iteration here, and usually it's on 100. The iterations will allow the computer to run through calculations. So for instance, if a, if a company has to borrow more money, that means interest cost is going to be higher. If interest cost is going to be higher, it means profit's going to be lower. If profit's lower, it means that taxes are going to be lower, and therefore net profit's going to be lower. So the, rebound, the, the profit and loss statement will recalculate, but then that also means that the balance sheet will see less retained earnings coming into the balance sheet, which means that the company, the, the, that, uh, that they'd have to borrow a little bit more in order to balance that off. And so you'd have to run through iterations in the profit and loss and balance sheet statement until you get up with the correct number. So that's the reason why you want to be using, again, calculations, automatic iterations, so you don't get circular references. Now I'm going to copy this over. Whoops. I'm going to copy this over to future years, and we're going to get a small amount of short-term borrowing. Now, when we see that small amount of borrowing, we, we may change our assumptions. For instance, we may say, well, actually our uh, amount of capex growth, let's say, is too high. So let's reduce the capex growth to 4500. That's going to require that we borrow less money. And so that's how we may make the adjustment. Right now, we're, our balancing item is saying 2209. If we decide we're only going to spend uh, 4000 then that's going to go down. And so that's how we'll balance it. But once we use that uh, short-term debt as a balancing item, we will always come up with a uh, balanced balance sheet. Now, we can also just fill in our profit or our, our cash flow statement here, which we'll later use when we get into more valuation stuff. And so we've now completed each part of our, for our financial statements and our forecasts. The next thing that we would do from this point is we would start to look at how realistic is our forecast. So, for instance, we're going from a profit of 4551 to 5041. Is that realistic? Is that the amount of revenue growth? Is there a reason why gross profit margin may continue to expand? Look, it's gone up and up and up. Does that continue or will you hit a peak? All of these types of questions are the questions that have to go into each of the variable items. But now what we have, and, and we, can, we can also, I'm going to get rid of the split screen for a second and go down to our forecasting section. And you can see that we basically have, how many items are we forecasting? 23 items. If we highlight over like this, uh, we're going to, let's, let's shade it and make it a, a gray so we know where we're forecasting. Now I just saw a little mistake that I made, which is to enter that in there. Actually, this is the overdrafts and short-term loans, which I'm going to pull down from up above. Remember that this is the balancing item. Now, if we didn't have our um, circular references set, this may cause a big problem for us. But since it is set, we can put that there. And the result is, is that that's going to change the amount of interest because that's the 
a little bit more overdrafts. And so that's going to change our final profit number a little bit. But the end results, the last one we have here, we haven't filled in, is the dividends per share. Now that we know the amount of dividends it's coming out and we know the number of shares, we can get that. So we've now completed our financial statement forecasting till 2015 for McDonald's.